Katie Morrison Uten, and I'm the Executive Director of the Bear Center for Nonprofit Management at Robert Morris University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it has been our pleasure to have the opportunity to work with the Pennsylvania Parks and Forest Foundation as they work, continue their work to strengthen their friends groups. So over the last several months, we've been doing um, uh, in-person trainings about a number of, th of uh, parts of nonprofit management that are particularly helpful to friends groups. And uh, this video is going to focus on um, recruiting the board and uh, retaining the board. Now, Peggy, if you could tell us a little bit about how we can build the most effective board. Uh, building a board is, is hard work, as I'm sure many of you have experienced. It seems like there's a finite number of people in any given community who are that generous with their time and their talent that they want something else to do. But we do believe that the friends groups are a very attractive place for people to put their, uh, their ideals about making the world a better place, their desire to see their state park be beautiful and be used by a lot of people. So you have a very appealing um, opportunity to offer to people for work and service. Uh, many of you may kind of think, well, we know everybody that is willing to serve on our friends board and they're all here now, or they once were here. But I believe that that is really not the case. Look around your community and look at people who are very active in, the, in their children's schools because they know something about organizing volunteers and creating successful events. Or people who are active in their churches or in civic clubs like the Kiwanis or the Lions Club. And what you'd really like to find is someone who's just about to come to the end of their term of office with whatever group, on a board or on a, on a committee, that might have a little time and some, some experience in the kinds of work that you're doing. You need to raise funds for your park. You need to organize work days and get people out into the park, uh, helping clear trails and, and do other kinds of capital projects. And so who does that kind of thing in your community? Is there a particularly community-minded contractor who might be interested in not only coming himself, but maybe recruiting some of his uh, employees to help on a work day? Uh, is there a, you know, a, a person who has been a great Penn State alum and now is, uh, is looking for additional ways to put to work what they've learned about how you raise money and engage people in community work? So there are many places you can look to recruit new people and it's your responsibility as a board member to find new people and to get them effectively involved and engaged with you because who knows, you might want to do something different someday. That's wonderful. Um, now when it comes to working with the board, how do you best deal with disagreement and or conflict? Oh no. Surely not. We can't have disagreement or conflict at the nonprofit board level, could we? Well, yes, of course we could because we're human beings and we each bring our own life experience and our own lens into, uh, into the boardroom. When you are in a disagreement, it often is a good idea to try to kind of figure out what assumptions are people working under. So perhaps the person that is disagreeing with you has a different idea about what the core mission of the friends group is. Is it to primarily raise money or is it to primarily uh, do work projects? As I've said before, I believe that Marcy uh, would tell you that it's both of those things. But sometimes you have conflict over what takes priority. And sometimes if you can just name that, if you can say, you know, I wonder what we think our most important job is. That will help people step back from what may be a personality struggle, just I want to win because I, because I want to win, uh, but, but, but remind them that we are here as a friends group to work in the best interest of the park and to try to do the greatest good for the community. And so when you're looking at conflict to try to depersonalize it, to try to step back from it, to try to call people to a higher purpose and make them remember why you do this work can sometimes help. 
Of course, it also helps to take it outside of the boardroom and try to maybe have a cup of coffee with somebody and have a quiet and private conversation about an issue so that you can understand them better and where they're coming from and we can hope they can understand you better and where you're coming from. And between the two of you, you can decide you just like each other enough to try to work better together. And, and that often has been effective in my experience. It's also true that conflict sometimes occurs when an agenda is not being uh, carefully enforced. So having a strong board chair who is willing to cut conversation off if need be, or willing to let it unfold longer if need be, but someone who has a good feel for how to run an effective meeting and respects the time of everyone in the room and will not let two people dominate and take and sort of hijack the agenda. These are all things that we have found help in dealing with conflict in the boardroom. Is there anything you'd like to say to sum up? Uh, I believe that you are one of the most critical success factors for the state parks. Why do I think that? Because your citizens groups who are just brought into the parks because you love them and because you want other people to have a really good time, have opportunities for recreation, have opportunities for things that give them healthier lives and happier lives. And so your generosity of spirit, your willingness to work, your kindness towards your fellow citizens makes you a critically important part of why the state parks are such a marvelous part of living in Pennsylvania. Thank you.